Hello everyone, welcome to 5 minutes practical programming tools. For this video, we will start a new series. And in this part, we will introduce the MPI Cartesian tools. And we will show how to use it to solve some real world problems such as numerical equations in large scale. We will discuss MPI Cartesian firstly, and then we will show how to use it to solve the two dimension Poisson equation and three-dimension Laplacian equation from the scratch. We assumed that you have already understand the basic knowledge about MPI, such as MPI send and receive, MPI broadcast and reduce. If you are unfamiliar with those concepts, this tutorial is a good place to start. Besides, the basic API used in message communication, such as send and receive, MPI also provides several practical tools. The typical one is MPI Cartesian. The mesh is the basic tool to solve the numerical problem. If you want to run an MPI program based on our data in specific domain, we need to assign an MPI process to a specific domain or specific partition and then let this process to calculate and update the data in the corresponding domain. This is called the single program multiple data. The most basic function used in MPI program is to get an ID. For example, we could use MPI communication rank to get a particular ID. But this ID is in one dimension space. What if we want to associate this ID with the spatial information, namely the mesh information, in two dimension or three dimension, what should we do? For example, we have four MPI processes, and the coordinate for every process is x and y, which is in two dimension space. We need to make the rank ID equals to y times two plus x. What should we do? MPI dimension create could solve this problem. It could generate a communicator that will be used to initialize the Cartesian grid among all the MPI processes. And then we could use MPI Cartesian coordinates to calculate the corresponding coordinates associated with each MPI process. This is an example for creating the Cartesian by predefined dimensions. Go through this example line by line. For this part, it is straightforward. We need to get the ID for each MPI process and the total number of processes. The important thing is here, we declare an array in every position of this array. It contains the number of cells or slots in each dimension. Here, uh, for the first dimension, there are four cells. For the second, there are three cells. And then we start to use Cartesian create to create a new communicator. And then we use this communicator to calculate the coordinates for specific MPI process. There are two important parameters, periodical and reorder. We will discuss this later. And let's see the results. Firstly, we print out the results. We print out the ID and the coordinates for each MPI process here. One important thing is how the ID is correlates with uh, every dimension. Basically, there are a large for loop here. For example, we will range the first dimension and range second dimension and range the third dimension. And then at last, we will calculate the ID by each, by the number in each dimension. So basically, if you make the dimension zero zone as a horizontal direction and make the dimension one as the vertical direction, the value of the rank will increase according to the dimension one, which is the vertical direction here. And on another case, on the other case, which is uh, which is shown on the figure, on the right figure, the rank, the value of the rank will increase according to the horizontal direction. So the dim dimension with the large index value will increase more frequently. That is a really important thing here. 
And basically, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.